Greetings, fellow Wastelanders, and welcome to my settlement tour of Outpost Zamonja. After building at such a huge location as Spectacle Island, I wanted to build in a much smaller and contained space, so Zamonja was the perfect choice. I've actually built a settlement at Zamonja once before, but that was long before I was doing Fallout videos. I did, however, write a blog with a gallery that is linked below if you're interested. This newer build represents similar ideas to that of the older version, but amped up to my current standard of building. This build was done on a PlayStation 5 using the Fallout 4 Game of the Year Edition, which includes DLCs such as Nuka World and Far Harbor. I do not use any building mods, however, I do have Creation Club creations installed, so you will see some CC skins in my builds, such as clothing and power armor decos. However, I do not use any actual CC build objects in this settlement. If you have any questions about how something is done in this video without mods, please feel free to ask in the comments below. Apologies up front for some of the frame rate drops that you will see during this tour. This build represents about three size bars worth of building, so I tax the memory quite a bit, as I am wont to do. We start our tour outside the settlement. When you arrive at Zamoja, there are some pre-existing structures which appeared to be some type of makeshift wall of sorts, protecting the former settlement. In my previous build, I just built on top of those walls and left a lot of the build area out here empty. This time, I wanted to give it some life, so I set up a trade caravan post outside the settlement to attract traders and their guards. This does a couple of things. First, it adds some life with extra NPCs roaming around in addition to your settlers. Second, if there's an attack, they will fight back against the attackers, so they kind of act as an extra layer of defense outside the settlement. Some sort of medical problem here, or are you just yanking my chain? To give the traders a place to sleep, I set this bus up outside the settlement with some sleeping bags in case they want to stay overnight. This also gives them a place to store some of their wares. While many of the Brahmin out here belong to the traders, this specific one belongs to the settlement. Okay, so you're probably wondering, what is up with this Galactron? This robot represents an odd glitch in my game. Ever since I finished the Nuka World DLC, this Galactron appears at random when I fast travel to different sites. Each time, he helps me in combat, but then disappears when I fast travel away. While I was building here at Zabonja, he suddenly appeared, so I hacked him and shut him down out here. In my story, he is part of the outer defenses and activates whenever invaders appear. In reality, I woke him up after I finished recording this raw video, and he promptly disappeared. I added a couple mute fruit trees out here to add even more life to this outside area. Here, we also have a bathroom and cleanup station for settlers and visitors to use.
In case you're wondering where this mannequin came from, there is a trailer down the road where a raider lives. Take out that raider and you can bring the mannequins in the trailer to the settlement as decorations. Ah, that's better. Now, let's check out the interior of this settlement. Yes? Up here, we have a couple of heavy laser turrets, and despite how it looks, they are not wired together. Across is a guard station overlooking the entrance. This walkway allows the guard to quickly move back and forth when defending the settlement. This room houses the generator that provides power for the entire settlement. In vanilla, the console here is only available to build very briefly when you are instructed to build the device that transports you into the Institute. When that time came, I ran around a different settlement building the components of that device to use later on. Once you go into the Institute, the option to build these items is taken away. Up here, we have a place for the guards to take a rest and eat. I like the idea of a path to the roof of another building, so I kept this area open.
This radar dish is another component of the aforementioned teleportation device. Let's get a look at it from a different angle. Much of this central area is already here when you unlock the settlement, and you cannot scrap it without mods, so I wound up building on top of it to create the sole survivor's home at Zamonja. Inside is her personal workshop, power armor, and bedroom. These lockers are here when you arrive, so I left them alone since you cannot build them in vanilla. Back here is a gardening area safe from attackers thanks in part to pre-existing structures and the large rock faces that surround it. This central brick structure is the main building at Zamonja when you arrive, and without mods, you simply have to build on it since you can't scrap it. I decided to make this a Minuteman operations area, complete with a computer console, an area to rest and eat, guard stations, and a weapons workbench.
This group of turrets is here because off in the distance is where enemies can spawn during settlement attacks. A lot of the wood floors in the build menus are very clean looking, so I like to campfire glitch wood pieces into the floors to give them a more patched up look. This is a design tip I picked up from the Insane Shekelador, whose channel is linked below. Since there is no body of water to put giant water purifiers into, you need to rely on water pumps for your purified water at the settlement. Putting them down here also offers some protection since they're away from the area of potential attacks. Out here is a public area for settlers to cook their food. Yes. Hi, how are you? Tajé is a silly way of saying the name of the real-life chain of stores known as Target. This chain is mostly based in the United States and offers all sorts of items from personal care products to clothes to toys and more. Tajé here is a shop featuring a general junk dealer and a clothing shop with an outside area to hang out if settlers and visitors alike are too pooped from shopping. To the side of the clothing shop is a small dressing room where settlers can try on clothes before they buy. The mirror here is actually two light-up posters from the Nuka World build menu glitched together 
a trick I picked up from the school zone. And yes, I didn't notice until I was editing this video that there is a floating pink dress on one of the shelves. It was important to me that the businesses making up the bulk of the settlement were connected somehow, hence these walkways. Here we have the clinic known as the Band-Aid Brigade. Now, as we go through this section, you're going to hear a sparking noise in the background. That is me having screwed up a wire glitch during the build. Sometimes I accidentally kick in a wire glitch, but don't complete the connection and the spark just floats in the settlement. Usually I catch it, I just reload my last save and do it again. However, this time I missed it, so that's my bad. Up here, we have an area for more defenses and a place for the doctors in the clinic to take a break. This clinic is rather small, which is appropriate given the size of the settlement. Still, I managed to work in a bathroom and a cleanup station. This melon container was one of the first objects I ever learned to build in the game, so this was a fun little throwback to an earlier time. Up here is a smoking area for any settler to enjoy a cigarette or a cigar. This chem station is used by the clinic doctor to create chems while keeping fumes outside of the clinic itself.
Grab Your Grub is the fast casual eatery here at Outpost Zimonja. The settler who runs it lives in a shack built right behind the restaurant. You'll notice I set it at an angle so it would continue to wrap around the edge of the settlement's build borders. Another day of hard work, but never changed. When settlers want to get a stiff drink with their food, they go to Sips and Giggles. I wanted the interior to have a kind of loungy, comfortable feeling. This is a place where settlers can come inside, forget about the drama of the world outside, and relax for a bit. I really like the unique textures of the various Nuka-Cola machines in the game, so I put one here instead of the usual use of the vault soda machine. Sips and Giggles is also an inn, so this upstairs area features several beds that are available to rent. Different beds have different prices. If you want a real bed, it costs more than the sleeping bags on the hay bundles. In reality, of course, this gave me a place to create several beds for the settlers in one spot.
dangerous look about you. Hope you ain't here for me. Yeah? Yes. Okay, check this out. Watch as the scavenger walks up to the vending machine and begins working on it. How did I do that? Easy. I built the vending machine and then rug glitched a scavenger station into it. The scavenger then walks up to it and works on it and it looks like he's repairing the vending machine. I love simple fun tricks like this and I seem to remember I either learned this from the school zone or Sardeliac, both of whom are linked below. And that is my tour of Outpost Zamonja. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you enjoy what I do, please consider subscribing. Kind comments are always appreciated. If you have any questions about something you have seen in this video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer them in a timely manner. Special thanks to my patrons on Patreon who support my activities on Ben's World of Transformers and allow me to create these videos. Until next time, stay safe in the wasteland.